Stay tuned to this video and we're gonna show you how we are going to do a complete whole hog barbecue from living pig to whole hog barbecue on the plate. Stay with us, let's get into it. What's up Caddy Wampus crew? Welcome back to Caddy Wampus Acres. It's Jason and today we are going to do a complete whole hog barbecue. We're going to be starting with one of our American guinea hogs that are still alive in our backyard here in our, on our farm. We're going to butcher the hog and we built this pit. We've got a burn barrel to make our charcoal back here. Already got that fired up. We're going to go through the whole process. We're going to take you along with us. I got up at 5.30 this morning and started a fire underneath our water bath. We just use a 55 gallon drum for these American guinea hogs. It's about the perfect size. We have to tuck their butt and legs in, but um, this works perfect for us. So right now we're just getting the water up to temperature. And all we use out here is three cinder blocks. Let them turn down their side with the holes out and a 55 gallon drum all right here we are um, we're about three hours in and we're at 155 we could start a scald right now but everybody knows it's better to scrape a pig with a friend so i'm waiting for my buddy gerald to show up so what i wanted to do is I'd, i've seen a lot of videos on whole hog barbecues and uh, building your own pits and stuff but I've never seen one where they fully explained every aspect of it, so I wanted to do that today, just so you have a full grasp on how to do this yourself. So, first things first, I got 50 cinder blocks here, uh, and I did four across the bottom, and we did about three and a half on the other side. Down here on the side, I have a hole on each side so I can fire the pit on each side. I just took a piece of angle iron and to hold those blocks up above there and sort of suspend them so I have one block width right there uh, opening and that's on either side. And here's what we did on the inside. This is just a uh, woven wire fence. This is what we're going to put on either side of the pig so we can do the flip. I just took rebar in here and my horrible welding skills, I just welded each one of these so we have a nice strong structure and I pinched it in between the blocks. So we went three blocks high, I did the rebar, and then um, we did one set of blocks on top and that's what we're gonna put our tin over here on top of the pig. But I basically did four rebar across and four rebar this direction, crisscrossing each other. And I think by welding them together, or you could probably tie them together, uh, that made a big difference. And then right here is our burn barrel, right in, inside of here. I started it up with some pallet wood just to get it going. But on top here, you're, we're just gonna keep burning this red oak. I cut down a red oak uh, a month or so ago. And so I'm gonna be burning this red oak down. We're gonna shovel our coals out of the bottom here. And all this is is a 55 gallon drum cut a hole in the bottom, the top's cut off, and I drilled holes and put rebar across there. And so as this wood burns and starts uh, turning into coals, it'll fall down and we'll just shovel it right out of the bottom here. So that's the plan. Gerald's here. We're gonna get back here to the pig and we're gonna get going. So Gerald's here. Everybody needs a friend to help scrape a pig and butcher a pig. <laughs> And so this will definitely make a difference uh, if you try and do this by yourself. It takes a long time. So what we're going to do is, and I'm not going to show the actual kill on camera because YouTube would take the video down. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make an X between their ear and their eye and their ear and the eye. And we're going to hit them with a 22 mini mag right there. And that will kill them instantly. And so it'll be very humane and then we're going to uh, bleed them out by cutting the carotid artery. So we're gonna turn the camera off for a little bit. Our water is already uh, ready to scald. We're at about 165 degrees, that should work good. So we will be back as soon as we uh, have the hog killed and we're gonna hoist it up on the gambrel here. Okay, we finished with the part that I don't like the most, but uh, we've come out to about 130 pounds live weight on her. And so um, that's pretty good. I'm thinking probably we'll check the hanging weight when we're done, but I'm assuming she's probably gonna be about an 80, 90 pound hanging weight. So we will see. So 
Our next step is we are going to dip her in the scalding water and scrape her. When Lauren and I did this the last time, we found that uh, doing half the scald and scrape first and then coming back and doing it so we're only getting, so we only have to worry about half of it being warm, works pretty good. We're about 160 degrees and we're going to do this, we're doing this for a minute and we're going to take it over and start to scrape. We're going to use the traditional bell scrapers, they have a small and a big one and then we're going to try this guy today too, this is a new one, all on Amazon. So we're finishing up with the scrape. Um, she's pretty much ready to go. There's all you're always going to have a few hairs that are stuck in, so don't worry about that. Um, so we scraped this. I don't even know how long it took us. You know, Gerald, maybe 30 minutes. About 30 minutes to scrape it. And what we did is we did it in sections. Uh, what I found is doing it that way makes it a little easier. We did here, took it out, scraped it here, took it out and scraped it, and then she was had our barrel here maxed out because of her girth um, so next thing we need to do is eviscerate if you are squeamish you probably don't want to watch this this will be the part of the video you're going to want to skip um, but we want to show people how we do this just so they know that they can do it it's easy enough and they can do it themselves it, it's literally one of the easiest things to do easiest thing to do is to start right here and it doesn't take much pressure at all and because you have her um, stretched out, it's literally just a slight touch. And what I'll actually do is, I'm gonna just run a line straight down, not piercing the belly. You don't wanna pierce the guts at all. And so I'm just barely touching it and I'm using the tension from the skin to do most of the work. And I'm just following my line. Like I said, the gut, your the sack with the guts in it is right here. Do not pierce it. You'll you're at risk of ruining all the meat at that point. And so what I'm gonna do is I don't eat the tail. I don't know. I just can't do it. I, I tried it. Doesn't taste very good. So we'll end up cutting all this part out here. Once you get into the cavity, you got to feel your way around it. And some people zip tie it. Um, she wasn't really full, so. I'm not overly concerned about it. We're gonna get it out pretty quick here. I'm gonna take my fingers and sort of guide my way down here. And you'll start feeling the uh, insides real quick. And so, like I said, they're right here in a sack. You wanna stay away from that. And so as you can see, we have the gut sack here. I'm not piercing it. I'm doing a pretty good job so far. All right, so now we're down to the rib cage. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach down here. I'm going to feel with my uh, left hand. I'm going to grab the windpipe and everything, and I'm going to cut that without cutting my fingers. Yep. All right. So now we have a fully eviscerated, gutted pig. Um, so this is the point now where we would get a hanging weight. Um, we'll do that here in a second. All right. So now I'm going to continue down up under the chin here. Same thing, just following my line. I don't make very good straight lines, but. And then you can see the jowl meat in here. This is good, good stuff. So I'll run through basically the cuts that people are used to. Hams, hocks, trotters. Uh, these are, this is your bacon here. And you can see this is, she's got good bacon. Uh, American guinea hogs are not known for their bacon, but she's got about, um, thinking probably an inch and a half of bacon on her so that's good fatty but it's good anyways um, it's going to be good for the whole hog roast as you will see um, then down here up these are going to be your tenderloins your loins are 
right here. They run along the back here. That's what you cut up in the chops. Uh, American guinea hogs do not make very good chops because they're very small. Um, and then you'll have your spare ribs and your baby back ribs are the top part here. We got our uh, split on. I used a hatchet and a sharp knife to split the sternum here. I've taken air all the way open to the chin. Come right up under the jawbone here and so it gives you plenty of space to flay her open. Okay, so I've injected her. We've cleaned her up for the most part. Still got some uh, little bits of fat here and there. That'll that'll just sort of come off. But um, yeah, we got her open. Uh, she ended up dressing out at 103, 105 pounds. So she's gonna be a long cook. Um, I'm ready to not sleep tonight, so we're ready for it. But uh, this we're gonna what we're gonna do is um, I just injected her with apple cider vinegar and brown sugar mixed. And I mainly, mainly what I did is I focused on the hams, the shoulders, and the thicker parts, um, and just sort of plumped them up a little bit. So Gerald and I are going to take and put her on face down, and then I'm going to salt the skin, and so we can hopefully get the skin crisped up. I'm going to take the trotters off at the knuckles here, and that's a pretty simple process. It's just a matter of cutting the skin, and then uh, cutting through the knuckle. Nice. We're gonna cook this face down for about, I guess until the hams are about 160 degrees. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do some rub and stuff and some mopping on the inside. So I think for now we're gonna call it. It's 12.40 p.m. And so we're gonna see how much this 105 pound hog takes on our pit here. We've got a lot of uh, a lot of smoking to do. Cover her up. Alright, we're good to go. We'll check back in with y'all in a little bit. This is three hours in. Ham is at 122. The straight up temperature of the pit is 210. This is like perfect. All right, it's been six hours. Our ham's up to 171 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, oh. As you can see, bones pulling right out. So that's good. Um, so we're looking good on that. And I'm gonna maintain, oh yeah, skin's getting there pork's getting there so it is actually edible right now but we're gonna make sure um, we're gonna put some dry rub and we're gonna do some mop on here she's a little done more done than I wanted but as you can see man she is really tender already after six hours um, see these ribs ribs come right out got some good juices in there hit her with some dry rub and uh, we'll go from there. We'll get a, we'll do a little mop sauce. A little dry rub, nothing overly special here. Just some salt, some brown sugar, pepper, garlic, Cajun seasoning. Next thing, mop sauce. This is just some. Um, Ketchup, mustard, whole bunch of apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, um, a few seasonings, nothing fancy. And then as you can see, there's the juices from the pig are pooling right there. And so what I'm learning from this one is we're going to make sure that we have a good amount of skin to make sure none of these juices are falling off tomorrow and then we're also going to keep it closer to 200 instead of uh, letting it ever get up near 300. Okay we let it cook down and we're ready to pull it off. Um, 
I threw some coals in there to keep it nice and hot and then just let those cook down and uh, I'll show you in a second how I determined that it's done. We, we knew that it was all the way cooked through, all the meat was cooked through and then I checked the skin and if you can hear that, the skin is nice and crispy and as you can see the mops absorbed into there, dry rubs absorbed into there, it's got its juices in there, it's looking really good so uh, Lauren and I are going to pull this off on this piece of fence and we're going to put it over here onto a platter. So and I'll, I'll let you listen to this for a second. Hear that crackling? That's what we want. Alright so what we'll do now is we'll just debone her and um, go and pull through all this pork. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. I had my mouth way too full to even try and finish narrating the video. Uh, this pig turned out really good. Um, this was a successful, complete whole hog barbecue. Total cook time was right about nine hours, but uh, man, everything really turned out good. We were able to do it again with another pig the next day. Remember what we always say here, when you homestead, you're home fed. This was a perfect example of that. Check out these other videos. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.